What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Takeaways edition of the Vegas Nation podcast. I'm your host, Heidi Fang, and I'm joined today with Herberto Manzano, my guy who used to work at the Review Journal, now covering things on the NFL spectrum for SI.com, SI Now. Gilbert, thank you so much for coming on the show today and joining me here on the Takeaways edition of the Vegas Nation podcast. We're brought to you by Station Casinos, STN Sports. Download that mobile app today. We're also presented to you on Blue Wire Podcast with Liquid Death. Gilbert, thank you so much for taking the time to join me here today on the show. By the way, uh, Heidi Fang, thank you for that nice intro. And I'm not really sure what li Liquid Death is until I saw it at the store the other day. And I'm like, hey, I like that name. Is it beer? Is it coffee? Is it a, a vitamin drink? I don't know, but I'm glad that your sponsor are here on Vegas Nation. And what did you uncover about Liquid Death from the Rocky Mountain <laughs> Alps or Swiss Alps? Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, a, it's actually really good water. So I'm here promoting the brand just like Compass on the B. I'm a, a brand person here. And, and Heidi, it's so good to see you. Like you mentioned, it is a new job for me. And also, I'm going back to Gilberto on the yes. byline. So thank you for giving that proper introduction. That's why you're the best. If I flip between Gilbert and Gilberto, it's because I knew you, you as go. Gilbert at the Review Journal. And now we, we talked about this on Raider Nation Radio when you came on, but now you are coming back to your roots, to your true name and getting that back out there into the world, putting it up on Twitter, Gilberto. I love it because it's your name. That's who you yeah. are. And I'm glad that you're finally, you know, going by it. Unfortunately, my name is not as cool as yours. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you on. Uh, what's the Spanish version of Heidi? Is it like, is it Haiti? Haiti? I there you go. Haiti. Haiti a lot. Like okay. when I go to order at like the taqueria, they'll say Haiti? Haiti? Haiti. <laughs> Your yeah. order's okay. ready, Haiti? <laughs> you are correct. Because I, I do, I do. you know the funny thing that I think, that I think about it? Heidi. Because when I, I have a friend who goes by Haiti, and every time I see her, I get confused because I, I think oh. about, you know, Heidi Fang. And then she's like, no, it's Haiti. I'm like, I'm sorry. I've known you for years. So uh, yeah. kind of a mistake there. But uh, that's me with my, with my bad memory. It's the same, you know, we can do this, uh, you know, back and forth with different things. In fact, I don't think anyone ever really spells my name right when, you know, you put the name on the like a Starbucks yeah. cup or whatever. So um, sometimes I just make up fake names at the Starbucks counter. Like, my name is Princess. <laughs> <laughs> that they don't misspell. Yeah, they, <laughs> can, they can spell that. Name, but... <laughs> See, if, if I say Gilberto, they're going to be like, what did you say? And don't make me repeat myself because, like. For some reason, when you hear Gilbert, it's easy. And then you throw in an O. It's like a complex uh, calculation problem that you can't figure out. So, uh, yeah, maybe I just go with Gil when I go to Starbucks, you know? Yeah, my fa my favorite Starbucks name I ever did was Starla. I did that after watching Napoleon Dynamite, and they had the bodybuilder named Starla. So, <laughs> and then, just like hearing the guys call Starla, Starla. <laughs> I got to start doing that, doing these fake names. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, and it keeps the people guessing behind the counter. They're looking at me like, your name's not really Starla, is it? Because the truth sounds different. And to that, let's get into the truth of what's happening with the Raiders, Gilbert. Lots of things going on between the quarterback position to the combine coming up to Dave Ziegler going on the bus and with the boys podcast yeah. just a couple days ago lots of information coming out of that I didn't know the former uh his former position was guidance counselor that yeah. was pretty interesting to me how many general managers do you think have been guidance counselors in their years I want to say maybe just him one <laughs> wasn't he like the the counselor for one of the the guys like Will Compton or Taylor Luana I forget which it one was for it was Taylor yeah okay who was released today by the Titans. Yeah. I was like, oh, well, I know he was injured, I think, in week two. So, you know, great offensive tackle, something the Raiders desperately need, but they've been go. needing for quite some time. Connect, as, connect. Uh, yeah, what was that? Connection there, maybe. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if he's still got it in him or that he wants to play. It kind of sounded during that podcast that he was like almost done with, you know, wanting to get back to it. I don't know, though. I just kind of playing it from what I heard in the podcast, tone, things like that. And when you hear tone, I was listening to Dave Ziegler talk, and a lot of what he said was really intriguing to me, particularly about the quarterback position, which I kind of want to do a little dive into with you. And I've been doing that over the past course of a lot of these podcasts because it's, you know, the offseason, and we got a lot of time to kind of think and ponder about every option that the Raiders have. And so when you look now at the release after the benching and then they cut Derek Carr, now he's talking to the Jets. What do you think happens with Derek Carr from here as you look ahead and the NFL cards that uh, may be? 
Yeah, it's starting to look a lot like uh, for Heidi for for Derek Carr that he, he just needs to wait for Aaron Rodgers because uh, we don't even know if Aaron Rodgers started the darkness retreat, uh, the four day retreat where he's gonna escape out uh, the world and just you know clear his mind, and we have no idea where he is because again he mentioned on the Pat McAfee show that he has a small circle and nobody talks outside the circle, so we don't know. And Derek Carr probably doesn't know either, so it's a very tricky situation if you're the New York Jets and you're thinking. Okay, we really want Rodgers. We have Nathaniel Hackett, but we just had Derek Carr come in th uh, through the holiday weekend. If you're, if you're spending time on a visit on a holiday weekend, that means you guys like each other. There's a good effort there. And uh, there's been reports that they were really uh, uh, impressed that they called him a future first ballot Hall of Famer if he's wearing the green in New York. So uh, I think there's a lot of love there, but I don't know if it's a way to say, hey, Aaron Rodgers, hurry up because we want to get this guy Derek Carr. And if you're if you're the Jets, you know, before I get to Derek Carr, you're thinking you go all in for Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. or you're trying to, you know, have your cake and eat it too and try to wait to see which one wants you. And maybe you don't end up with Carr, you don't end up with Rodgers, and you end up with Jimmy G. I don't know if that's good for uh, the Jets there, but we'll see what happens. But with Derek Carr, it's like, uh, you know, I always go back to the money. Like, who's going to pay Derek Carr? Because I felt like with the same situation, I think it was a money issue there because, yeah. you know, they had a visit there, you know, the Raiders could have got something in the trade too, but you know, I think the salary cap issue and the money was a problem there. So I'm really wondering what happens with Derek Carr. If, it, if it's not the New York jets, does he go back to the saints? And then also Heidi, a lot of these teams got burned in previous years with veteran quarterbacks, like the Colts, the commanders, you know, thinking about Carson Wentz who did it to both teams, by the way, yeah. uh, you know, you, you have uh, right. Matt Ryan, uh, Philip Rivers strata for a bit, you know, mixed results there. But when you got burned by a veteran quarterback, you're, you're probably thinking, you know what, let's go back to let's go to the rookie quarterback route and take our chances there. That could maybe hurt Derek Carr at the end of the day. Yeah. And with that, like you mentioned, Aaron Rodgers and thinking about this darkness retreat, which I think he's supposed to emerge from soon. You know, what if in that retreat, he just says, hey, you know, I'm going back to Green Bay. That's uh, or I'm done. I'm going to retire. I mean, nobody knows right now. I think that is part of one of the biggest dominoes that needs to fall. Uh, Derek Carr, I don't know how much that expedites what he thinks he needs to do in terms of money. What do you think Derek yeah. Carr is looking for? You know, I, I think it's tricky because also too, like you got like the, the, the ego is a thing also to check the box. Like if you're if you're the number two, nobody likes to be number two. And if the Jets are really waiting for Aaron Rodgers, are you telling if you're Derek Carr, you're telling your ego, hey, we're gonna stay in check here because if Rodgers says no, we're quickly gonna jump on that Jets team because they have everything we want. Uh, a good coach and Robert Sala, a good defense, uh, Heidi Fang. Uh, you know about the, the Raiders defense uh, really yeah. well. Uh, yeah. When you have South Toss Gardner, you know, locking down people, uh, I think Derek Carr for him, that's appealing. You got Garrett Wilson. Maybe the Jets are a little thin and in terms of playmakers, but their own line's pretty good. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see Brees how the Hall connection. Maybe coming back after injury too. There you go. Brees Hall, you know, yeah. from those fantasy football people who were devastated about Brees Hall falling uh, in October. Uh, he could be back. So it's a very good roster. And like you mentioned, Heidi, if the money is someone decent and and I think he lost like $40 million when the Raiders cut him, uh, he could get maybe half of that. Like you mentioned, $20 million. I say you jump on it. Uh, but then again, I know, I know the quarterbacks, like, like even if, if you're like a decent quarterback, you probably get more than $20 million. Like, like Daniel Jones is probably going to get for sure $30 million for 20, uh, 2023 uh, or plus. Supposedly the report, he wants to get 40 to 45. The the Giants are probably thinking more like in the 30, 35. So if you're Derek Carr and you're seeing what Daniel Jones might get paid, you probably want that for one year. But it might be tough if you're a free agent quarterback. So maybe it's somewhere like, you know, 25 to $30 million and a good roster in the Jets. You put that ego in check and say, hey, Aaron Rodgers, you said no. That's your missed opportunity. Let's go uh, gangrene. Hmm. With Aaron Rodgers, I think like the Raiders are probably maybe looking that way. And I say probably maybe because we started off talking about Dave Ziegler on the podcast with Bustin' with the Boys, and he kind of left it open-ended the way he spoke. He didn't necessarily say we're looking for a short-term quarterback that's going to get us wins. It sounded as though he's trying to find the best fit for the team now. And obviously when you hear that, to me that kind of says – no, we're not looking at a guy like Aaron Rodgers because he may only give us two years. And that's not what we want to establish this franchise and this regime over. So I'm wondering, who would you think would make the best fit for this team right now? Yeah, you know, I keep going back, Heidi, to, you know, starting the, the, the youth there, doing a new 
era of Raiders football. And I say maybe go with the quarterbacks, with the rookie quarterbacks, that is, because, you know, you're, you're stuck with a veteran for so many years in their car, and he just never really got anywhere. And, and and maybe this team is not ready to be a Super Bowl contender, as people found out quickly last year when they got Devontae Adams. Like, there's just, there's just so many holes in this roster. Uh, and he, if you go big game hunting like uh, Aaron Rodgers, are you ready to be a contender? Because if you get Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams back together, you know the bar's going to be very high, and, and, and it's pretty much Super Bowl or bust. I don't think a wild card uh, berth will be – enough for those guys and um, maybe it'll be enough for some people some fans because it's, it's a while it's, it, it takes a struggle uh to get to the playoffs and raider fans know that it's a very rare uh in, in their organization so maybe that's good enough but uh you got to work on the defense too and if you're gonna pay aaron Rodgers, like that's a big tap he's gonna get i think i want to say 60 million dollars and the cap hit might be like 31 million dollars but i was reading that you could get around the cap hit if you pick up his money for next year right but then there's more money involved so it's very complicated to go for aaron Rodgers. so I, I keep going back to the rookies and when you're number seven uh that's that's a good spot to be in but then again like would you get the number three quarterback the number four and then that gets a little dicey where like you don't get the guy you want like if you're gonna go swinging for for a rookie quarterback you want the guy that you want because you know you got the first pick there. Yeah, maybe you'll get it wrong, but at least in your heart, you got the guy that you wanted, you evaluated, uh, and you went down swinging with that person. So it's tricky because, say, you know, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, uh, Richardson, and Levis go top six, which we've seen before in the quarterback draft, I mean, in drafts for quarterback. So, uh, but then again, maybe you trade up a little bit for a top five pick. We'll see what happens. But I always go back to the rookie route just because I feel like uh, it gives you so much uh, flexibility. And then when you you land the guy like a Joe Burrow, you're set for 10 years. That is the key, right? Finding one of those guys, a Jalen Hurts, even in the second round, yeah. not too far. Joe Burrow, you know, you look at these guys, too, uh, Justin Herbert, all recent draft picks that have been really working out well for a lot of the teams that have gone after somebody young, uh, getting on the side of youth. Last year's draft, obviously not great in terms of quarterbacks. Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis were like the talk of the, the draft, yeah. which not much to rave about there in terms of production on the field this past season. Season. When you think, though, about this coming draft, I feel like there are a lot, like you mentioned, those four names, a lot of talent at the top. Who do you think rises to the top out of those four? Who do you think will be the first pick? Yeah, it's tough. Before, before I answer that question, you got me thinking, Heidi, because like, you know, I feel like maybe four years ago, teams that need a quarterback, they will reach. They will trade up and get whoever it is like, hey, I see these mock drafts and, and, and there's four or five guys that you got to have. So we're going to go after him. And teams got burned that way by reaching for quarterbacks. And now you're seeing, like, the last few years, okay, let's wait a little because that's not our guy. Like, you saw with Kenny Pickett to number 20. I thought he was going to be maybe a top 15 pick or, or 10 because people reach, and they didn't. Same thing with Malik Willis to go, what, the fourth, fifth round? I forgot already, Heidi. Uh, so sometimes people are just like, trust your scouts and just get the guy you want. If he's not there, you don't reach. So, uh and then all you heard last year was like, this is a this is a draft class you're waiting for for a quarterback. Now it's like, you know what? You got to wait for Caleb Williams next year. It's always like, yeah. wait for that class or this class. And it's like, okay, always go back to your scouting report and who do you like? So uh, you could, you know, I feel like nobody is a consensus number one quarterback. Like Bryce Young, people li like him as a passer. He's probably polished and ready to go. But it, people are afraid of the stature. He's a small dude. And uh, maybe he's not as, you know, as mobile as... You know, a guy like Kyler Murray, that's where you take a chance because he got to escape the pocket. But we've seen issues with Kyler Murray, uh, Baker Mayfield. Russell Wilson made it work in Seattle, but not working right now. Let's put it that way. Uh, so size could be a factor, too, because he would take a lot of hits. And, uh, you know, you're not available either. Uh, I want to say, you know what, I'll go get, just give you an answer. I'll go with CJ Stroud because he does have the size. Maybe he's not as polished as a passer, but he is the closest to Bryce Young when it comes to passing. Like Richardson, like I started doing some some film watching on this guy because you know I don't get to watch too much college football during the season when I was a beat reporter because okay. it's all about the beat. And then I'm sure. like, is this, is this guy an edge rusher or a quarterback? He's massive, and yeah. then he can move around too. So if you're if you're somebody that really, you really trust your coaches and you see the raw uh, potentials and and you want to make it work, I say you take a chance. But if you feel like okay, that's too much work for the for the for the passing there. Yeah, he has an arm, but he is not polished to stay away. Same thing with, uh, with Levis there. Uh, I got to uh, uh, talk to his former OC at Kentucky, uh, Liam Cohen with the Rams, and he used to rave about uh, Levis at Kentucky. So uh, I've heard good things about him, but I always go back to at least C.J. Stroud, but not by a lot because everybody has some kind of weakness, and 
but every time I check a mock draft, it's either Bryce Young going number one for the quarterbacks right. or it's uh, C.J. Stroud. Uh, I think from those two, they're, it's very mixed. I think, too, with Bryce, you're exactly right, that it's just a matter of the size that the people are looking at. And stature was a better word saying how you know, he's not just short, but stature. Um, on top of all of that, you have, like you said, you mentioned Anthony Richardson and Will Levis, but there's other guys that are deeper in there, like uh, a Hendon Hooker. I wonder, what are your thoughts on Hendon and how much he might be able to contribute to a team once he recovers, of course, from his injury? Yeah, you know, like you mentioned, Jalen Hurts. If you could find somebody in the later round, like that, that's it's it's better for various reasons because you get to build your franchise and other needs. And then, you know, maybe it won't cost you as much when it comes to a, an extension. But the only bad thing is that you got to pay the quarterback sooner because there's no fifth year option. That's the downside there. Yeah. Like Jalen Hurts is about to cash in massively this yeah. offseason for what he did uh, in in the in the Super Bowl. But I think guys like that just need a little more time. And they also, the good thing about picking later, maybe you get a better team fit, a better coaching philosophy, uh, better designs. Like, you know, you know, if, if the Baltimore Ravens never committed to Lamar Jackson and just say, hey, this is what you do well. Same thing with Hurts, too, by the way. Shane Steichen did a great job of developing a scheme for him. That's why he's a head coach in the NFL. Uh, shout out to Steichen at Las Vegas at UNLV, UNLV. Uh, product there. Yeah. Uh, I, always, I always like to say that. But, yeah, like it, it, it's risky because maybe they're not, they don't have the intangibles, the the size, the arm, stuff like that. But there's something about them that you really like. And if you, if you really trust your coaching, I say do it. So if you're the Raiders, what are you doing at seven? Are you going after one of these guys? Are you trading? What, what's your pick at seven? You know, I, I might give you kind of a the political, political answer, but – if you, if, I don't know if Stroud will be there or even Bryce Young. And, and and if you really feel you can make it work with Will Levis or Anthony Richardson, uh, I say do it. If you feel you trust your coaching staff, Josh McDaniels, you are somewhat a quarterback whisperer, right? And you feel like you could do it. I say you got to go with the quarterback. Maybe you even trade up if you see somebody hanging around number five or whatever it is. I think the Seahawks are number five. They have Geno Smith, right? Uh, even the Cardinals are number three, I want to say. They have Kyler Murray. So there's going to be opportunities there. Even the Bears, number one. Uh, I say you do it if you really like somebody. But if not, uh, you know the Raiders need defensive help. There's guys from Alabama, either edge or interior. There's some good pass rushers up top in this class. So uh, you can always build on defense if, if if you go the best player available route. Yeah, and best player available at seven, right? But if what do you think about the chances that they take the seven pick, maybe package it up with some other things, trade around, move down in that round to go after something else if the quarterbacks are gone? Yeah, or, or say maybe there's a quarterback like a Levis that you don't really like, but somebody else behind you does. You definitely do it. You trade down. It's always a good scenario to trade down. I feel like there's always like stats to say, hey, you you kind of build the other position in the roster. You end up winning at the end of the day. So it's not the sexy uh, kind of thing to do for fans. Like, oh, we don't want this number 20 guy instead of the number 10 guy. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes when you're a smart front office, you say you do that. Uh, and like, again, like you mentioned, Heidi, when you have so many holes in those roster, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta get more traffic to build to fill them. So uh, it would not be a bad idea for me. What do you think about just overall this draft class with it coming in with the Raiders? They have they're going to have after compensatory picks eleven. Uh, oh. The focus being mostly, I think, should be defense. And is there anything that you think about what you saw? I know you got to see him at least twice with the yeah. Raiders that you would certainly look to upgrade like as a priority outside a quarterback. Yeah, the, pretty much any position you want on defense, but I'll, I'll start with the interior defensive line because you have you have a good cornerstone piece and Max Crosby on the edge. You would like to have two. We don't know what's going to happen with Chandler Jones because it just wasn't his year last year, uh, but you want to have two of those. They tried, but you got to have some toughness in the middle. You need some guys to, to close gaps and, and, and fill lanes and, and prevent teams from running on you, and that, that makes life so much easier for, for the edge rushers as well, so... Uh, I know linebackers inside are not a, a priority anymore, but that'd be nice too if you get physical. Uh, like I would just like to see the Raiders to be a physical team again, like the back in the day. I know we're, and people don't want to turn the clock back, but if you could just you know you know stop the run and, and do that, because especially today nowadays these you could scheme up ways to like limit the plays downfield, so everybody's countering and doing little dump offs and quick throws and running the football. So if you're if you're pretty stout up top in the front seven. Get maybe an inside linebacker because pe those guys tend to fall because they don't want those players anymore. But even the Raiders and you have various needs, I say maybe the linebacker or somebody in the interior, uh, like a big nose tackle. 
All right, Gilbert, as we start to wrap things up here, tell everybody what you're working on with SI Now. What's your current project for the new NFL reporter over there? Yeah, I'll, I'll say this real quick, Heidi. It's uh, it's an adjustment to go from one team to 32 <laughs> teams. And it's like kind of trying to learn from all these landscapes here. And I'm, just, I'm glad to talk Raiders. So I could kind of, you know, refresh the memory on my Raider days and, and just talk about, you know, all the teams and figure out how to do it. So uh, I am working on a story about Aaron Rodgers, like we mentioned. That's why I was wondering what the heck is happening with Rodgers from the from emerging from the darkness, because I got to write the story and I don't know how to write the lead because he could come out from darkness and change my whole story. And then I'm messed up there. But I'll just say uh, I'm a, I'm going to say I'm going to pretend that Rodgers wants to get traded. So I did five uh, trade proposals uh, for Aaron Rodgers. And I'll just say this. Uh, I, I have the Raiders on there. So if you're watching this on a Thursday morning or the day after, uh, check it out at uh, sportsillustrated.com. Now that is what you call a tease because now all I can think about is who who would you trade? What would you do? Yeah. What would you do? Uh, uh, Neil, it's a nice like package how... too. I know. So we have to wait for that article to drop. This is, go. of course, a Wednesday afternoon we're recording, and I'll probably get this out oh somewhere as soon as I can. <laughs> yeah, got to read that trade proposal. Could be a possibility. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Just lastly, if you could, you know, I know you covered the Raiders for a while here with us at the Las Vegas Review Journal, Gilbert. You know, overall, do you think that now they kind of have a fresh start with what they're doing in their front office and how much faith? should people place in what Ziggler and McDaniels have sh so far kind of showed yeah. you with what they're yeah. trying to put out as a blueprint? It's tough because year one didn't go as expected. Like you, you make this big splash move for Devontae Adams, Chandler Jones, and and even from my time covering the Chargers for, uh, for half the year last year before going to the Rams, like they went all in too. Khalil Mack, and you, you're supposed to see this big competitive ABC West, and uh, surprise, surprise, it's still the Chiefs who run the division and the league apparently. They won the Super Bowl, so uh, I, I think maybe with expectations a little lower, just give them time. And my thing, and it's also my issue, but for fans too, like you, you, you judge the Raiders based on their history because it's a history of a lot of blunders, blunders, especially after uh, that Rich Ganny and uh, Tim Brown days where they went to the Super Bowl. It's just been what two playoff appearances since then. I forget, yeah. and nothing seems to work. And so you just judge them off of history. Like you say, oh, they 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 stuck they stuck with Robert Gallery or whatever draft pick that comes to mind. Derek McFadden didn't work. All these draft picks didn't work in, in the first round. But you got you gotta take the wins. Like Max Crosby worked out, guys like that. Josh Jacobs flourished last year. So uh, I'll just say this: they know how to run the football with McDaniels. And I think when you get the right quarterback, then you see the rest. What you saw what with the Patriot era. Uh, with Tom Brady, with McDaniel. So I think Josh McDaniel is a good coach. I, I know what happened with the Colts is not a good look for him. Uh, but to have a, a running man like Dave Ziegler, who just seems like a very down-to-earth, laid-back guy, I got to meet both of those guys very briefly at the Combine. And, you know, they say hi to me. They don't even know who I am, but they say hi to me. Uh, that, to me, went a long way. So, uh, you know, I, I'm excited to see what they do in year two. And I always say coaches, front office, they got to get three years. But year two, you better see something growing uh, or it's going to be trouble for year three. There you have it from Gilberto Manzano from Compass on the Beat, as well as SI Now. Gilbert, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to getting that article in my hands. Uh, of course, I'm saying that like it's going to be a physical paper, but yeah. I look forward to it and <laughs> seeing what you got out there on Aaron Rodgers. And again, give him a follow at gmanzano24 on Twitter. Thank you so much, Gilbert, for your time. Also, everybody, make sure to keep up with all of our podcasts on VegasNation.com. Three times a week, we have different episodes airing, so get those down downloaded by hitting subscribe and checking out all that we do as well online and in print. For Gilbert Manzano, I'm Heidi Fang. Thank you so much for listening.